Don Sharkey is Professor of Neonatal Medicine and Technologies at the University of Nottingham. His major interest is in the development and integration of health care technologies for neonatal care and is the co-author of a very interesting article recently published called The Newborn Delivery Room of Tomorrow, Emerging and Future Technologies. Today we're going to speak to him about neonatal care. Welcome Professor Don Sharkey. Thank you, I'm looking forward to our conversation today. So we have read about the parallels between the neonatal intensive care unit and the delivery room and how acute care for the babies can be very similar in these two settings. Despite significant advances in monitoring on the intensive care unit in recent years, innovation in the delivery room often lags that in the intensive care unit. Why is it so, Professor? Um, I think you probably have to, um, to look back uh, on, on the history of neonatal medicine and, and how we've looked after these babies. So um, if we go back um, even 15 or 20 years ago, many of the babies, the uh, extremely poorly babies, would not have survived the delivery room and made it into the neonatal intensive care unit. So, of course, all of our care was centred around what happened in the neonatal intensive care unit. We were looking after the babies who had survived that initial birthing and transition process. And so much of what we developed was around that care because many of our babies would maybe spend three or four months uh, in the intensive care unit with us. And so that's um, where technologies evolved, where we learned to look after those babies better, where all the research was really focused. And what we didn't really have was a good understanding of what, um, what was happening at birth for these very, very sick babies, the, the, those more extremely preterm infants. And so um, only really in the last 10 or 15 years have we learned more about what happens in the delivery room, um, how a baby transitions from being the fetus to, to being the newborn, um, and how that differs across the, the different population of babies. So not all babies are the same. Some are born extremely preterm, um, you know, perhaps weighing only 500 grams at 23 weeks gestation. And that differs very differently to a baby who's born at term who may have gone through a period um, where they lack some oxygen during the delivery process and, and they come out with a very different pathology to those who are extremely preterm. And so as we've learned over the last 10 or 15 years, we've, we've understood more around the physiology um, and the importance of, of how we perhaps take a step back and don't necessarily resuscitate every baby, but we stabilise them and actually helping them through that process of transition. Um, we started to learn more. And so um, it's really we've been in this kind of catch up phase and that's why the delivery room really has lagged behind what we've seen in the neonatal intensive care unit. Um, but as we've learned more now, what we're seeing now is that actually people recognise those first few minutes, we call them the golden minutes of life, um, that people now recognise those as being crucially important because many of the things that happen in those first few minutes can have a, a lifelong impact on, on, on the newborn. Um, and for those that, um, that transition in that period, more smoothly, then actually their outcomes are better. And so that's where the technology really comes into its own. And as, as we've, we've learned from the neonatal intensive care setting, if we can get that right in the delivery room, actually the whole journey for that baby and their outcome is much better. And so we're starting to see this acceleration now of delivery room technologies um, and this catch up that we're seeing. And so the two are starting to realign themselves. And from what I understand, there is now a greater interest to develop new technologies in the delivery room. Professor Sharkey, you mentioned in the article that the analogy of the Formula One pit stop is often used during delivery room resuscitation. How can new technology specifically intended for the delivery room contribute to the teamwork and assist in this uh, critical situation? Yeah, so... Um, uh, I'm not the only one who uses that analogy of the Formula One pit stop. It's, it's used commonly in medicine, particularly around resuscitation settings. And um, of course, when you've got a very sick baby that's about to be born, then, then you need to make sure that you've got all your team dynamics right. People know what their role is within that team. And then how the different technologies, how the, the monitoring of the baby, for example, is going to be crucial. And so um, we often like it to that, but, but what's obviously very different to being in a Formula One pit stop is that, as I, as I mentioned, some of our babies are only 500 grams, so they'll fit in the palm of your hand. And when you've got three or four team members around that baby, there isn't much room to do much else. 
And so what you've got to do, you've got to be very slick. And, and as I said, we, we talk about the golden minutes, the first golden minutes of life. And it literally is that in the Formula One pit stop, you've got a few seconds. For us, it's a few minutes to get everything right or as good as you can do it. Um, and I think really that's where technology comes in because we, we've been up until 20 years ago, we talk about it in the article a lot. Um, it was only um, in 2010 that we saw the first introductions of technologies in the delivery room um, in the form of things like pulse oximeters. Um, and prior to that, we, we used very rudimental um, kind of traditional uh, devices, such as the stethoscope, just for assessing our babies. Um, and as we've realized over time, actually, we can use the technologies to help us and to guide us. And so that's what we do in that very confined space around a very small uh, a resuscitation platform. It's a small bed for the baby. We can all get in there and we can actually uh, use the devices to, to support the information that we need in order to, to make the right decisions at the right time for those babies. And so a lot of the things that we focus on now are around monitoring our, you know, what information can we get about the heart rate for the baby? What information can we get around the oxygen levels for the baby? What's the temperature of the baby? They're the kind of, kind of three core uh, measurements that we want to take. Um, but as we've learned more about transition babies, we're also starting to learn that there are other technologies that can help us as well. And there's lots of research going into those. Um, understanding how we can better ventilate the babies is, is crucial. You know, can we make sure that we're, we're not doing too much ventilation, that we're actually gently inflating the lungs? Um, and can we monitor things like the brain oxygen levels? Are they a useful measure? Um, will they point us to different outcomes? And so new technologies are coming in and trying to help us. And there are other things that we talk about in the, in, in the, in the article as well around um, distractions. So when you're working as a team, it's important that people focus on their roles within that team. Um, and work from um, Michael Wagner in, in, in Austria shown that when we look at where people's gaze, for example, if, if you have too many monitors around, and actually the gaze tends to drift towards the monitors rather than the focus on the baby. Um, and you can take you can take your eye off what's going on in front of you. So it is important that we're not distracted by all of these things. And so the whole team dynamics, you know, that, that pit stop analogy is, is crucial. And of course, um, when you've only got a few minutes, you need to gather as much information as you can. Um, and so having some prior warning, a bit like the, the Formula One drivers when they arrive, they've already given their team some information, you know, that the car doesn't feel right in this way. We have that information from our maternity and our obstetric colleagues. That, you know, these are the particular challenges for this baby. And so we're all set up um, and we all have our roles and, and we play those roles. And as I say, technology is probably that extra, that extra person in the room who's there in the background for us supporting everything that we do. Like you uh, mentioned, as a part of your article, you did a survey to understand how clinicians and researchers view the uh, current and future role of technologies in the delivery room care of high-risk infants. Which new technologies were ranked as the most important emerging ones and what do you think is the reason for that ranking? Yeah, so, um, so when we were preparing the article, it was important that we understood um, from, I, I guess, the key opinion leaders, the, the core researchers and clinicians who work in this space um, and do all the research that really has pushed us forward. So we, 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 we worked with colleagues um, from the European Society for Pediatric Research and the delivery room group that we worked with there. And we took their views and views from other clinicians around the world. Um, including Canada, Australia. Um, what we really wanted to understand was what is it about the technologies that that we that we're interested in, and and clearly a focus on measures, things that help us, that guide us with our resuscitation algorithm, that tell us which way to go. Is the, is the treatment that I'm doing is it the right treatment? Is it making an improvement in some way in that baby? And so there were there were lots of um, lots of highlights around learning about what was going on with the baby and the technologies that can do that have really they've really been developed from adult practices so um, when you when you go into hospital as an adult and someone measures your oxygen levels you have a probe put on your finger well it's those sorts of technologies that we've tried to adapt into the delivery room today um, and they are useful in a way but they were never really designed for that setting and it's a unique setting at birth you know, the baby's wet, the baby's very small, their anatomy is different, their physiology is different. And so some of those technologies don't work in the same way. And so there's a real interest to develop new ways of doing that. 
And some of the technologies that really came out top were things around having wireless technologies. Um, if you're going to deliver a baby, you may want the baby to be on mum's chest where she can get to those first cuddles, which are really important for bonding. And so what you don't want is lots of trailing wires that go all the way back to the monitors or, or even restrict that, make it, make it so that it can't happen because the, the wires are just too short. So you have wireless devices that allow that to happen. And things that are less intrusive. So some of the devices that we put on, you may end up putting four or five different sensors onto a baby and you soon run out of space and it takes a long time and they all interfere and they're all at risk of falling off. So if we can minimise that and just do it all in one go, then that's probably an advantage. There were things around um, learning more about the, the way the things that we're doing. So um, the respiratory function monitor is a good example. Um, where you can understand, you know, have I got, am I breathing correctly for this baby? Am I finding that uh, I'm trying to breathe that there's a lot of leak or am I delivering too much to these lungs that's going to cause them injury? And understanding those things are really important. Of course, what we need to be careful of is as, as we bring in all of these new technologies is every piece of technology has, has some sort of um, interface that we all need to look at. So it's, it's perhaps another monitor, another screen, um, and before we know it, the, the team may be, may be confronted with three or four different devices that are giving them all different parts of information. And what we need to be careful of is, is uh, I guess, information overload and making it too complex. So we do need to make it simple. And I think that's come through in a lot of what we're doing. One of the kind of, I guess, the, the holy grails is around contactless monitoring, where you can perhaps have a camera system that doesn't, you don't even need to put anything onto the baby, but it's able to monitor what's happening with the baby, tell you what the heart rate is and the oxygen levels. And that's really the holy grail. And I think there's a lot of excitement around that. I think we're many years off achieving that, but it's something that in the future we'd hope to do. There is good work in adult, in adult practice that has shown that some of those things are possible, but even there it's very challenging. And so with a very small baby, it becomes even more challenging. So there, there is lots of excitement around technologies and how it can be useful. Um, we've also got to be careful about bringing in technologies that really haven't been tested and, and shown that they are at work, that they can introduce new ideas and take us in different directions, um, but also that they're not harmful to the baby, they don't disrupt team dynamics, and that actually they produce something that improves the outcome for the baby, and I think that's a key point. Thank you very much for joining me today, Professor Don Charkey. You're welcome, it's been great talking to you, thank you.